Hi guys, what's up? Thank you so much for watching Mostly Sane. I'm Prajakta. Welcome back to another Real Talk Tuesday video. Uh, again, it's one of those videos where I... See, this is why I absolutely love my job because I get to wake up every day and meet amazing people from around the world. I'm going to move here because please cut to a wider frame because right now I'm sitting with someone who's currently the fastest man on the planet. Give it up for you, Aunt Blake. Hi. Hi. What's How's up? it going? I know that you've had a really long day. Very long. And uh, right before we started this interview, he went into a hello. Okay, it's very nice to meet you. I said, no, no, <laughs> we've still got a video to shoot. How's it? How's India treating you? Welcome to India, by the way. Thank you. It's wonderful being in India. I'm treating me well. Um, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit different from where oh, from where I'm from. Very very spicy, but my girlfriend loved it so. Oh. It's okay. So you don't really have much room for complaint there? No, I don't. Yeah. If your girlfriend <laughs> loves it, you love the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but for everyone who's been clearly living under a rock, if you don't know who Yuhan Blake is, he basically is the fastest printer that we have right now. And um, the record that you hold is 9.69 seconds. Quite so, quite so. Listen, I take longer to like turn my alarm off in the morning. <laughs> like it'll take me longer to reach my alarm. Just like, oh my God, let me just snooze that. You're right about that, man. It's a very fast time. It is no time. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like it's no time. That's Nine true, seconds is almost no time. And you're you run right. 100 meters in that much. Very fast. I feel like that day I feel like I wasn't, I wasn't touching the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us something, like for example, you run, that's what you do for a living. I mean, let me tell you, I run too, but then I run away from problems, yeah. <laughs> I run towards food, I run into people, but you run, run for a living, <laughs> that's something that you do. Tell me this, is it something uh, that you knew you were good at, so you decided to pursue, or is it something that you wanted to pursue, so you work towards it? Interesting question, totally the opposite. Yeah. I was playing cricket one day and um, about 80 meters, I was running up to bowl and the princess pass said, uh, come here, you got to go and run. I was running in so fast, I was missing my mark. Oh. I was playing cricket because that's my first love. Yes, you've if spoken it, about that. Yeah, definitely. So from cricket, I became the fastest man. So you were running, you were running to bowl. Yes, I was running to bowl. But you were running so fast that you kept kept missing your mark? I kept missing my mark where I was supposed to land. And the principal said, no man, you got to go and run. And from there, it just, it just take off. So is that is that something which was told to you that, you know what, you're such a fast runner, try exploring that more than you explore cricket? Or did you just realize that on your own, that, oh my God, I'm good at this, I should try this out? A bit of both, mm -hmm. but um, I really wanted to play cricket. Because um, my father normally, when, when, I, when I woke up in the morning, tie me with a card in front of the TV to watch cricket. Really? Yeah, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> but, but it actually grew on me every time, so I loved it. And you are here because you want to play in the IPL. Of course. That is something that <laughs> yeah, we... that, that's, that's something I've been dreaming of. Um, right now, I'm very close. It's just to step on the ground. And you're in the country, you're right there, might as well just pad up. I was training right beside the Wonka Island Stadium. You were? Yeah, I was. I didn't even go over the ground. You didn't? I didn't. Oh, I was just no. waiting for them to call me to play okay. before I go on the ground. Okay. But coming back to running, tell us this. Um, I feel like, you know, as an athlete, I'm sure, and, also, I'm, I, and I make this uh, question because I know a lot of my audience is very young. A, lo a lot of them are at an impressionable age where they are sort of trying to figure out what they want to do with life or which way to go. It really is amazing that I get to have conversations with someone like you. Tell me this, when you are um, prepping to be what you are, in a position that you are in right now, you definitely have a physical regime. You have like a workout uh, set for you. But what is your mental regime? What is your process when you are about to run? My mental process, I, I try, what I always tell the younger folks, I try not to think about what am I going to do because I put so much pressure on the mind. Yeah, and I, I mean, everyone has these expectations from you and you have millions of people who are waiting to see what Johan's going to do now. That's a lot of pressure, a lot of eyeballs. Listen, 
that pressure is like you're taking up all of Mumbai and put it on your shoulder. That's yes. how heavy the pressure is. Yeah. And for younger folks, if they can't manage the pressure, don't do it to please people. Do it to please yourself. When you're starting to please people, that's where the pressure comes in. Because they're on the outside looking in. They don't know what takes place on the inside. Yeah. So it's all about you and where you stand. Also, we've seen that before you run, you, you have a little bit of a jig happening every now and then. There's a little bit of dance coming in. Yeah. Well, everyone else is just like, oh my God, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll, it's a thing called dopamine. We try to get rid of the nervousness. Um, I do a lot of Michael Jackson yeah. movies. I love Michael Jackson, by the way. You probably don't know the Jamaican music by Cartel, Popcorn. I don't know that yet, but I would love to explore that. Yeah, you should explore that and you will love it as well. I should look that up. Yeah, um, definitely. Also, when it comes to being in a position that you're in, in especially in the age of the internet, is... Is um, that a different sort of pressure that you have to deal with on an everyday uh, basis? Some people um, call it art. I call it cyber pressure and um, <laughs> some people call it cyber bully. Yes. But um, yeah, definitely because you have people out there um, saying this, um, oh, what happened today? Um, you should have won that race. Um, you're doing good. But that's, that's, that's what I feed off. You know, I like when people throw those stuff at, throw those stuff at me. It, it made me want to just go there and just hmm. not, not hurt them, but go on the track. Is that and, where the beast comes out? No, the beast comes out in training. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm devastating when I'm training. I'm sure. Yeah, that's where the beast comes out. But tell me this, are you, how do you react to people telling you how to do what you do? I'm sure you get that a lot. That you know what, Johan, maybe you should try doing this. But you know what, Johan, maybe that's what you did wrong. Or that's, this is, this is what, is that something that you hear a lot? Every day. Hannah? Every Hannah, day. I'm talking to him in Hindi now. Fought it, <laughs> you have 40 different people telling you different, um, yeah. their opinion. Yeah. And how do you, how do you deal with that? Where you just like, um, I'm sorry, are you the fastest person on the planet right now? I don't think so. And my girlfriend is a bit mean. She said, I must say that. But I said, you know, I just listened to the different opinions. Mm. Probably some of them make sense. And I probably pick one out of out of the 40 that makes sense. I know you probably get it. Uh, uh, I think you should um, introduce some more people mm -hmm. like to your show. Or they yeah. probably, yeah, everybody, everyone get that. There's always a lot, There's of, always opinion, a lot yeah. of opinion. And, uh, do you remember your first race though? Yeah. Um, Not professionally. It could uh, be like a race you ran in school. Yeah, it was at sports day. Yeah. Yeah, after they take me out of the cricket. How old and were they, you? Um, I started pretty late. I was 16. Okay. Yeah, now my people start at 12. Yeah. Yeah, I started pretty, pretty late at 16. That's why I know I have great speed. And um, I came second. Oh. Yeah. On your first race? On my first race, I was struggling. Do you know what happened on my first race? What's that? So it was sports day and I was always a part of... Like, I loved... For, for, for the longest, I loved running. And then I was just like, I'm not winning anymore, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped running and I joined the cheer team, right? Wow. In school. So I was very proud about it. Um, and then for uh, extra marks, I was told that, you know, my sports um, uh, participation is super low. So I need to take part in some things, right? <laughs> so I chose that it has to be hurdles. For some reason, I said, why would I just run? Why would I just be a part of the relay team? I'm going to go for hurdles. hurdles. And it was sports day and I was also the prefect. So everyone in school knew that, oh, okay. Right. So the prefect is like the school yeah. captain. So I was, I was like, in my head, I was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went for my first ever hurdles race and the first hurdle I tripped and fell flat on my face you never practiced and then I just picked my pom-poms back <laughs> up I said I'm gonna go to the bleachers oh, that's no. where I'm gonna stay I remember my first hurdle um I fell as well you did yeah I did oh boy yeah when you go to the high school and and doing track and field that they start you out on that as well you have to do every event and see what you're good at and you know what's worse was that all my 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 two best friends, uh, shout out to Shivanjali and Zanika, both of them were really good at sports. Like Zanika, one of my best friends was like the school sports captain and she wow. was always great about yeah. it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I fell flat on my face. So sports has never been a thing that really... Well, definitely I see a final calling. And it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it requires me to sit down and have chats and I love that. Now, we spoke about... You being called the beast, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but a lot of that changed. I've, I've of uh, of all the content that I've seen of you on the internet, I I learned that a lot of that perspective towards training, perspective towards the sport changed after your injury. What happened there? 
Um, well, I got injured. A very, in 2013? Yeah, a very serious one. Yeah. My muscle came off my bone. Oh my God. Yeah, so I'd have to do a, a 10 hour surgery to get it back together with an aluminum in my leg. So that was, that was crazy. And for all the young folks that is listening, um, I never give up. When you, when you look at how much people in this, on this planet, and for me to be one of the fastest men on that planet. It's a mind-blowing thought. It, it's, it's crazy. It's More crazy. while I sit down and say, damn, I keep on pushing and pushing, and I'm back again, and I'm, and I'm forced to reckon with. What was your perspective towards the game before the injury, and how did, the how did that change? Did it? It did, it did change a lot. I, I was unstoppable. I feel like no one could have touched me. I was unbe before the injury. Before the injury, I was I was unbeatable. Mm -hmm. You know, even even Usain was afraid. We didn't even run together in many races. And um, after and when I have the injury, you now when I reach at a certain point in the race where it happens, I tend to get scared and it it, it keep it keep on messing with my mind for three it years. Still, does it still do that? No, no for no. three years though, it been playing mind games. That's how the mind works. Yes, because how does how does an what goes in the mind of an athlete when your body does not support you? You could be very very strong up Trust here, me, but if the body is not there, it, it won't it won't it won't happen. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty crazy thing, but but is that something? Uh, although it does not bother you anymore, is that something that's that's sort of embedded in the back of your mind every time you run now? Definitely, it is part of my subconscious kicked in and say, "Hey, mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be very aware of that." But, but I've I have great speed, mm. and I don't, yes, I don't, don't and I don't worry about that. That's why I'm telling them, <clears throat> leaving this speed to me, speed kills. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Which is I, why you should drive safely. Yeah, I do all the speeding. <laughs> all the speeding you should do is on track. Tell us about the Road Safety World Series. Well, as you know, um, there's a crisis in in India. And um, driving from the airport, they didn't have to tell me. I see it for myself. Yeah. It was so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said, this, this is the first thing I've ever seen in this world. Really? I know a lot of road safety for, for Qatar and, and, and Dubai. Dubai yes. But um, for, for, for India, I, I need, this is, this is the what one I need to What road safety? Up. I want to know what road safety is necessary in Dubai. There's so much road and so much, so much speeding. Really? I, all the time that I've spent in Dubai, I just felt like they were so disciplined the whole time. Yeah, the, the, the part where you're at. Um, True, I, mean, I come from there's, India. There's so. people dying every one minute. In Dubai? In Dubai. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. My road safety. I wrote fatality. So that's why I'm here in India trying to push this World Series. And it's such a beautiful initiative because you've got everyone playing. Definitely, the legends. All the legends are playing in this. Yeah, it's and going, you are playing in it. It's going to be, it's going to be epic. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Now, speaking of Johan Blake and speaking of running, something off the sport. Tell us two things that you run towards and two things you run away from. The finish line is not an answer for towards. Uh, that's all right. I run away from argument. When, Any when, sort of argument. In a relationship, <laughs> you know, I, I just never like confrontation, you know, and. And, and she always come in with something, so I always run away from that. Is 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 that your girlfriend? Yes. Oh, good job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking one for the team. That's amazing. I run to her as well. Oh. <laughs> Two and, things. That's one. Um, and the next thing that uh, um, I run away from. I wonder if I should say it. Uh, let's get back. And the next thing I run, I run to, I run to my TV. You run to your TV. Yeah. What do you run I, away from? Huh? I'm going to come back to that. You're going to come back to yes, that? Yes, two things that I run towards and two things I run away from. One is your girlfriend and one is your TV. You run towards. Yeah, I run towards You run TV. away from arguments and? Uh, uh, let's miss it. I run away from dog. I don't like dogs. You don't like dogs? Um, I have 12 dog, dog bites on my, on my foot growing up. Why do you have 12 dog because bites? Why didn't you get scared of dogs earlier? No, when I was... When I was <laughs> Why did you wait for 12 <laughs> dog bites? <laughs> No, no, I was, I was fighting with the dog that oh day. God. The dog bite me and I fist him. Yeah? Is the same dog that has bit you 12 times? No, different dogs. Oh, um, I was coming from school, I was really hungry. My parents couldn't, my parents didn't have the money. It's not, it's not stealing, you know, it's just taking. Um, I went over, over to this, next day, um, this yard and I pick a mango and the dog just, just get me. Me and my friends, but just only me. Even the little chihuahuas. <laughs> afraid of them 
This is great news. The fastest man on this planet will run away from a chihuahua. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> oh I, man, I, that's I, a wish. I, I want to see this happening. No, seriously, I don't like dogs. I don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Tell us about your childhood. Tell us about how what? it was growing up in Jamaica. Growing up in Jamaica is real. It, it was really tough for me. Knowing the fact that I didn't born with um, a ghost spoon in my mouth. I did have to work my way out of stuff. Sometimes my mother, when, time, when we don't go to school, my mom is happy. Knowing that she get the next money, she can cook our food. I didn't go to school a lot. You know, I, um, I, lear I learned a lot from YouTube. I learned, I learned, a I don't like school. Y you should love school. Anybody's watching this. Everybody should school. Yeah, yeah. School. But um, because my mom was struggling, I did have to do something. And I said, God, I need something. I was praying that day and then um, I'm going, going to be frank with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I couldn't run. I didn't have any speed. And I go outside, you know, and I don't know. I just started to run. First, I get a bicycle. Then I started to run. I said, Father, I need something to take my mom out of this poverty. And I started to chase cars. Really? And, yeah. But tell me something, growing up in situations like you did, where you knew that you wanted to do something to get your mom and your family outside of the situations that you were in. And I'm just saying this based on everything that I've seen happening in my country. I just want to learn from you. You know, sports is not something that you will opt for first. You'll always look for a more um, reliable, for a more uh, assuring job. Is that something that you ever thought of, that maybe I should try this and... Sports can be something I try on the side because I like. Or did you just go for sports? Like, did you think of doing an, a, any other job other than that because it was the situation that you were in? To be honest, I never, I never thought of any other jobs. Okay. Um, I was just there and my father said, listen, this is what you're going to be. You're going to be a cricketer. You are going to tie in front of the TV and you're going to watch it and you're going to make us proud and you're going to take us out of that. And I'm, going to take over. I'm, I'm somewhere happy I didn't choose cricket because my future would be in a selector's hand, yeah. but my future is in it's my yours, own. Yeah. I'm in that lane by myself. Yeah. No one can show my destiny but me. Do yeah. you remember uh, what moment it was when you felt like, oh, okay, I am so glad that this is the route I took. Was there a time when you felt like I'm finally reaching to a point where I wanted to reach when I started? Definitely, when I signed my first contract from Adidas. Mm. And... Um, I never see so much money. And I said, Mom, you know, and I send and I send it back home and you know, she can't eat and that's when the, that's when the game changed for me. Yeah. You know, when I signed my first contract and they say, Okay. I say, okay. <laughs> and I started to drive a little one car and you know, I just feel I just feel different. Yeah. Yeah. It makes all the difference. Sometimes I have this conversation with so many people where they're like, you know what, money can't buy you happiness. And I'm like, I don't I am I'm not I'm not gonna It, it can't buy you happiness. It can't buy happiness because in, and in the end of the day, you still can be sad at any time. Money can't buy happiness. It just makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. It's always a great start. Yeah, it's always a great start. It's a great start. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're earning all the money and not being happy about the job you're doing, that's horrible. That's horrible. But earning money and doing well for yourself, doing what you love doing is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, you're I right. I think it's a great start. It is. And speaking of great starts, you're going to be at the Tokyo Olympics. Ooh. In 2020. Definitely. And uh, we want to go, Luhan. Um, definitely. Um, this is the greatest show on earth. The Olympics, I love it. Um, it's going to be my third Olympics and it's going to be my last Olympics. So it is, definitely. which is exactly why. Yeah, definitely, I'm going for it. Because to wait every four years for an Olympics, it's not easy. It's a long, long way. <laughs> it's not easy. So definitely, I have, to, I have to push for it. I have to give everything up. So tell us something. We know that after the Tokyo Olympics, we're going to see you back in India. Yeah, definitely. Because you want to come and train. Why India? Why is India... You know, I, I met the Indian, the Indian track team in Doha this year at, at the World Championship and they were expressing their feelings to me and, um, and they were very emotional about um, the country, not really helping them. And I said, okay, you know what? Um, I love to help. Our foundation, my YB Afraid Foundation that is changing the game in Jamaica. And I said, oh, you know what? Why, why, why? I'm going to come lend my expertise. And I know there are some good guys there. Mm. And, you know, no, I met a couple of them. Team. And the Indian track team, they have a wonderful 4x4 team. So that's why I really want to help and I'm going to lend my hand. Is that something you want to do even after India? Are you looking at other countries? Is that, is that something that you're passionate about? No, I, I'm going into acting. Really? Yeah, I love acting. 
Are you serious? Then yeah. you should definitely move to India. Yeah, you know. I There's a lot of acting here. I have to learn the Indian language. I think I, I think you'll be fine. Are you? Do you like? Do you know anything of Hindi at all? Yeah. What can you speak? Uh, no. Oh, the words. No, I don't know no, anything. No words. But do you watch Hindi movies? Yeah, I do. I, ju I just finished watching Hotel Mumbai. Oh, I want to watch that one. Yeah, no, have you watched any like hardcore Bollywood movies? There was this series on TV um, that... Oh, God. Mirzapur? Yeah. You watched... Oh, Drama. dear Lord, you watched that. No, I, 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 it was getting too... Um, That's very intense. <laughs> and you still <laughs> yeah, decided to come to India? You are a very brave guy. Also, I watched this one where this, um, this little boy was lost. You know, they show all of India and always struggle. And he lost his way on the train. Top dog, slum dog. Slum dog millionaire. Slum dog millionaire. Oh yeah, that one. That yeah, that, one was that, yeah, really that sad. one's been doing the rounds for quite some time now. So good. You like watching Indian movies? It, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's different. <laughs> it's very interesting. Have you watched any different. romantic movies? Yeah. No, I just uh, the action. Just action. The action. Yeah. Okay. I love romance, by the way, but I just love the action. You know. More. <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> Perfect. Th this really is something that I'm very, very curious to know about. You know, after the gunshot goes away and then you start running towards the finish line, what's in? Do you have any thoughts in your mind at all? Yeah, you do. You have um, you're running nine seconds. A, a very um, in finishing no time. Yeah. When you're losing, you think a lot. When you're winning, you don't have any time to think. Because you're so... Because, uh, all right, for example, if you're winning, the line takes forever to come. Mm -hmm. But when you're losing, it, it, it reads so, reads so fast. When you're losing, it feels fast? The line, the, 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 finish, the finish line, line comes to you so fast. If you're losing? If you're losing. But when you're winning, it takes forever. Really? Yes. That is... And just imagine, you have... You're out in front, and you have seven persons breathing, uh, breathing down your neck. <sighs> oh, yeah. That's how pressure it can be. And that will make you start fighting. And that's where the race can seem long. Oh, my God. It's, 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 it's physics. It's crazy. It is, it's crazy. It is crazy. And it's just <laughs> And it's very nerve-wracking as well, though. It's very, very, very nerve-wracking. I can nerve only imagine because there's no way Even I'll ever Even before know. the Olympics finals, I'm telling you, I went to the bathroom so much time. I'll get two hours worth of sleep. I couldn't sleep the night. On the day, I didn't drink any water, but I was still going to the bathroom. That's so nervous. Your mouth feel bitter. Ugh. Yeah, I feel like it... it your body react. I'm sure the bo your body reacts so differently to the pressure it, it, it and does, to the nerves. It does, man. It, <laughs> Do you ever get used to it though? You can't get used to it. It's a feeling that you want. Because that is the high being that you nervous, live for. Yeah, being nervous, it helps you. Well, some, when, when, when I go into a race and I don't feel nervous, I don't run well. Oh. Because, but again, because for so long now you've been running and you've been training. You train for everything else, but you can never really train to be okay with, with, that, the, with, that. with those mm -hmm. nerves. No, no, you get comfortable, but you never, the nerves are always going to always kick in. Always are going to kick Because in. sometimes you don't know what form you're in or how you feel and the shape, what, what, what the condition like today. It's just different. Yeah, your, body's, your body surprises you. I'm yeah, sure. it does at times. Does. Very cool. Uh, all right, everybody. This was a fun conversation with Johan Blake. Um, thank you so much. Thank you this for This was a lot me. of fun. I'm going to get out of your face so you can finally call it. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> if you like this video, make sure you give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget, uh, don't forget I come up with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. I'll see you again on Thursday. Until we meet, love, love. Bye. <laughs>